السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our prayers May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen Just a brief reminder brothers and sisters to myself and to you <coughs> As you know Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in an authentic hadith that when the month of Ramadan comes in the gates of Jannah are opened and the gates of Jahannam are closed and the shayateen are chained um, the ulama mentioned that for us human beings there are two main sources that encourage us to do evil there are two main sources that encourage us to disobey Allah Azza wa Jal. The first one is the shaitan. And the second one is our own nafs. And in light of this hadith in which Rasulullah says that the shayateen are chained in this month, that means that the influence of shaitan is at least reduced if not completely removed at least reduced because they are chained that implies that they are weakened they are restrained uh, they're not able to function as they normally do and therefore their influence upon us is decreased is lessened is reduced and I think we all hopefully experience that in the month of Ramadan this, uh, this energy that we find in this month subhanallah to do acts of worship that we generally do not find outside of the month of Ramadan this, this energy that we find to stay away from certain desires and temptations and even bad habits inside the month of Ramadan we're able to give up certain things more easily in Ramadan that we are not able to outside of the month of Ramadan and definitely this is one of the signs that this is true that the shaitan is weakened and chained in this month and so this is a great blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal for us but with it there's another blessing and that is that this is a month in which we can truly discover ourselves because if shaitan is removed from the picture the only influence that is left for us is the nafs and therefore if there are certain things that we continue to have difficulty with in the month of Ramadan then that is a lesson for us that that is coming from our nafs that is not from the whispers of shaitan but that has become, with time perhaps, part of our personality. It is ingrained in our nafs. So if, for example, the way that we use our tongue in the month of Ramadan, with our family, with our co-workers, with people in the masjid, for example, uh, and we're not able to control our tongue, even in the month of Ramadan, then that teaches me that this is something that has become part of my nafs. And if it's become part of my nafs, then that requires more attention from me. It requires more attention. Because that means that now I need to discipline my nafs to get rid of this problem that I have. And the nafs, as the ulama mentioned, is like a child. It's like a, if you will, a, a baby that you're trying to wean a, a baby which is one or two years old and the mother is trying to gradually wean the baby so that it stops nursing and starts eating solids the more that she tries to do that the more the baby wants to nurse the, the baby 
initially reacts very, uh, very violently almost to that weaning process. And if the mother, because of her soft heart, if she decides to continue nursing her, it becomes more and more difficult to wean the baby. In order to wean the baby, you have to allow the baby to cry and shout and scream, but you wean it until it will eventually be weaned and it will grow up stronger and healthier. The nafs is like that. When we try to wean the nafs from something, it reacts violently. It wants it even more. And so what happens that in the first few days of Ramadan, when we are, alhamdulillah, full of energy and we want to change things and we want to develop good habits and we want to get rid of bad habits, the first day, second day is okay, then the nafs starts to become agitated. What is this? I'm not getting what I am used to getting. I want it. And there is this very strong desire from inside to do that thing that I am trying to restrain myself from doing. It could be anything. It could be uh, the way that I talk, like I said, it could be certain things that I watch, it could be uh, certain things that I listen to, whatever. Whatever bad habits you want to call them. So, what happens is when there's such a strong pull from the nafs, there's a, a tendency to give in. To give in. And when we do that, then we lose. But if we understand this, that if we can continue to struggle and discipline the nafs and keep saying to it, no, just like we do to a child, to discipline the child, no matter what kind of tantrum it throws, no, you are not going to get this. Because I have realized that you have developed this bad habit and I need to discipline you. You are not going to get this. If we continue this, inshaAllah ta'ala, then hopefully by the end of Ramadan, after 30 days, it will become much easier to have overcome the desires of the nafs and discipline the nafs to a certain extent. So my advice to myself and to you, brothers and sisters, is to take advantage of this month to discover ourselves. To discover what are the things that I'm still struggling with in this month. And uh, be realistic. Don't aim to give up ten different bad habits in this month. You'll end up not giving up any of them. But pinpoint one or two or three. And then focus on them. And make a resolve that these things are going to be, they are not going to be happening in this month of Ramadan at all. Give up something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month. Give up an addiction for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month. Whatever it may be. Tell yourselves you are not going near it for a single day in this month. And if you do that, inshallah ta'ala, and you fight those urges of the nafs with this in mind, that it is a child is going to throw a tantrum and you have to be strong to overcome it, then with the help of Allah Azza wa Jal, with a lot of dua, with a lot of dua hopefully, as we are encouraged to do when we're fasting, Allah Azza wa Jal will give us the strength to overcome our weaknesses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us overcome our weaknesses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us cleanse our nufus. Allahumma aati nufusana taqwaaha wa zakkiha anta khayru man zakkaaha anta waliyuha mawlaaha birahmatika ya arhamar rahimin wa salli allahumma wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.